Dear Heavenly Father, we want to come before you this fine morning. We thank you for the gift of life. And we appreciate the wonderful opportunity it is that you've granted us to be in your midst, to hear from you. We request that you may humble our hearts, direct our thoughts, and align our intentions to hearing your word, for it to become useful and to be installed in our hearts, much more so that it may become useful to the people around us. This we pray honestly and believe in your Son, Jesus Holy Christ. Amen. Let's be seated. Thank you very much. Um, I take this with great honor that I'm, that I'm selected to be the partaker or the person that delivers the word of God today. So my name is David Koimbori Mora, for them that are, uh, that are new or might not know me. By God's grace, I also happen to be the youth chair. And all this I take with a lot of humility. Um, the last time I stood here, we, we spoke a lot about symbols and a lot of mambo jambo mingi sana. And some of the things we talked about uh, was around numbers, symbols, and how things can sometimes represent things that are real. And today I'd like us to deliver, I'd like to deliver today's lesson using one of those symbols. And I'll do that in the form of sharing stories. So today we'll be sharing stories, learn story time proper. Um, and the inspiration for this came a while back, not too long ago actually. Um, we and a couple of, uh, well let's say my boss, we had gone for a site visit um, near Kimende. It's along uh, Nairobi Naivasha Road, yeah? So, to Leander to have a site meeting, and on our way back, the path was not very well known to us. This is water called Gary. So, place in Yatulingilia, Kwanda, your site, to Kitoka, Ilikua, Kuingia, ni one way, Kutoka, ni another route, Yani, Kuingia, your Barabara is only ongoing. So, Kuingia, the main road, Lazimo to me, Barabara, in Guinea, but it's also designated. So, place in Yatulikula, right turn, see to Kirudi, Tulikula, left turn. I took on an issue. To me, skuma, to me, skuma, to me, nyarosha, barabara. Meet you at my end. Come meet. It was quite in the morning. It's foggy. Ni baridi. Um, ni cannot ni meona Rift Valley, but it was on my left. But in the pit and beef. Come on, hey. I don't think he nafaa kuwa hapo. But ni saw. To me, nyarosha, barabara, to me, enda vizuri. It's very foggy. So at that one, when one we once we got to the clearing. Hatuko to nona Rift Valley kwenye yuko. Ideally when you're going to Naivasha, Rift Valley yuko on your left, ndio? When you wamepiti, wase wavasha bana. <laughs> Naivasha yuko on your left, ndio? But when you're coming back it should be on your right, eh? So, si kuna fog bado, tumenyorosha, tumenyorosha. Eh, vile kumianza kuklia up, nse. Kumianza kuona like Naivasha, pala! Na utukajua nye, tumekula wrong time. So on our way back, we were hit. Kama ninge sema, nilikuwa ni miona Rift Valley, yo on my left. Atunge hao kukula hii barabara, because we wasted a cool maybe 30 minutes to kienda na Ivasha bala ya kurudi tao. And so this little incident, uh, among many others, just made me think about how many things that, you know, in small ways and in big ways sometimes, appear to us as warning, red flags, but we sometimes not take them up seriously because they are indicators and their direction in our lives. For this reason, I'll take the lesson, and it's derived from both teachings that we've received from Jonah 1, 117, and Matthew 7, 24 to 27. I'll use a story because it is pretty dumb to explain some things. Have you ever found yourself trying to explain a meme to your parent? It has happened to me a lot. It is impossible. Kama hailewi, hailewi. Now, where's he explain? Uki explain yini watu mnanza kukawa jinga ju. First of all, where's he explain? So, where's he explain mbona unacheka? Second of all, hailewi. So, pia anaka, hapa sawa. So, for this reason, I'm going to use a story and I'm going to request that you go with me through and through. I won't spend too much time explaining so that uh, you don't have to worry. You don't both look like fools, eh? And so, 
Um, there are a couple, not just one, but they all have an underlying message. So long ago, at least I know of this in the 1800s, back in India, vile walikuwa na janga nyumba zao, walikuwa na, just before they lay the foundation stone, eh, they used to give the equivalent of the priest in the area, the honor of laying that foundation stone. And so what the custom there was, as you lay that foundation stone, you would drive also a stick into the ground, and the idea was to keep pin down the dragon that might come from underneath and shake up the house so that it crumbles. So they used to drive a stick down into the ground so that they could, they could pin the dragon lying underneath by its head to maintain that it's in the ground. Ili si toke, i shake nyumba, i crumble in the form of earthquakes you get. So the theme for today is going to be there's no such thing as a dragon. Tell your friend, there's no such thing as a dragon. That is the title for today's lesson. Billy, I'm starting my story. Billy was rather surprised when he woke up one morning and found a dragon in his room. It was a small dragon, about the size of a kitten. The dragon wagged its tail happily, and Billy patted its, its head. Billy went downstairs to tell his mother, There is no such thing as a dragon, Billy's mom said. And she said it like she meant it. I'll just take a brief pause here, because it reminds me of something. Mm. When I was a kid, I used to um, quite, uh, my mind usually takes trips easily, random trips, so it's very, easy, it's very difficult for me to stay put on uh, one single thought. So when I was a kid, I had to be on uh, holidays in Africa, on peleko shags, on spend time muko. Yo time uliko mnathania ni vile, mapirweni wanapenda shoshoweni, lakini budget, ni budget, ilikuwa shida budget. So I go to my shards to not spend time muko. And it used to be fun for us because you know it's an adventure for us. So during my stay, I'm a stay shards. Shards go to Moranga, kuna nyoka nyingi sana. Mingi sana, mingi sana. So I used to encounter nyoka sana. And um uh, zilikuwa So much so that place in Lilikuwa na lala kwa kitanda, just next to the wall, there were some repairs done. And the fresh concrete in Yelikome to me, or plaster in Yelikome to Mika, for some random reason, it looked like a snake for me. Yelikome in a car, nyoka. Including Adi Akoka, because it was a, a huge crack, a laugh in Nenda in a Kungua. Had me in Yelikome on Akoka Ulimika, Kyoka Metoka, and that's where I used to sleep. And the curtain in Yelikome on Alala next to, it was a bit torn, eh? So, there's a bit of light coming in, Nisipu. I can imagine this snake that is close to me. Of course, it's just bringing alive the, the imagination of snakes. It's not exactly there. But what used to scare me the most, Zilikuwa ni crickets. Na hiyo time Zilikuwa na joni crickets. So, Zilikuwa zina play hii theme song, like in a horror, a horror scene. Iyo kelele zina piganga usiku, I used to imagine, sasa hii nimeanza kuatakiwa, like it's a theme song behind an attack, an eminent attack. And it's the snake that is going to attack me. So I used to have very, very desperate uh, nights in John Toy. Now, when we pile up, we to leave to Kirudi home, I'm saying, Missy, gonna do poor. You place in your Tulihamia soon after Ili and the kick in. Ili Kuo place Kuna crickets, Mingi Sana. So, Siku Maze crickets, Ili Kuo Zina kick in. So, what stood out to me is that I, Siku Anaeza Kwambia Mtu, because all this was playing out in my imagination. Eh? And my dad then, he used to, I to come over the weekend. So during the week, Hayuko, Mimi ni talala, but so one of the days I can come, and he's very jovial. Siku moja, I kwa bedroom, akapata ninja bado wa jalala. In fact, anatingika kwa bed. Eh, akakaribia, akaniambia, niaje ninja, and he kamambia, MC, kuna nyoka. Kuna nyoka inakama. Nyoka imetoka wapi? Tunaishi second floor sa hiyo. Kumbi, hiyo sound zinatoa, hiyo unasikia, mina jua nyoka inakaa. Ah, ok. Ah, ok. 
So mzee akaniambia oh hiyo sound unasikia ni crickets eh? So first of all mimi najua ni crickets. Akaniambia ni crickets. Nikamwambia na mbona zina sound hivyo? Ni kama zinataka kuni kuniattack. Akaniambia in fact hata hazikujui hazina haja na wewe. And so what he told me was the most surprising thing. Akaniambia vile zio toa hiyo sound. And basically crickets vile zinatonga sauti zinakonga zikirab wing zake hapa nyuma. So very fast that zinatoa kwa ka whistling sound. So unaambia hivyo mtu hii mtu atakwambia aje. So nilimwangalia kama amechizi. Naambia okay. Ika divert akili yangu and so I started thinking about cricket. Na story ya nyoka ikadi ikadisappear. Put an asterisk on that. So uh, Bill went downstairs to tell his mother. There's no such thing as a dragon. Said Billy's mom. And she said it like she meant it. Billy went back to his room to dress. The dragon came close to Billy and wagged its tail. But Billy didn't pat it. If there's no such thing as something, it is very silly to pat it on its head. Billy washed his face and hands and went down for breakfast. The dragon went along with him. It was bigger now. Almost the size of a dog. Billy sat down at the table and the dragon sat on the table as well. You see, this sort of thing was not permitted. But there wasn't much Billy's mom would do because she had already said there is no such thing as a dragon. So it was very stupid to tell a dragon get off the table if it doesn't really exist. Mother had made some pancakes, but the dragon ate them all. Mother made some more, but the dragon ate them all too. Mother kept making pancakes until she ran out of butter. Eventually, Billy just got one of them, and he said that's all he wanted anyways. Billy went upstairs to brush his teeth, and mother started clearing the table. The dragon, who by now was almost as big as mother, made himself comfortable by the hallway, and he slept. By the time Billy came back downstairs, the dragon had grown so much, so much, that he filled the hallway. Billy had to go round by way of the living room to get to where, he, to where his mother was. He sneaked in a comment, huh, I didn't know dragon grow up. dragons grow up this fast, Billy said. The mom heard, and firmly she said, there's no such thing as a dragon. Cleaning the room downstairs, the rooms downstairs, took mother all morning. With the dragon in the way and having to climb in and out of windows to get from room to room. By noon, the dragon filled the room. Its head hung out in the front door, it still hung out by the back door, and there wasn't a room in the house that didn't have some part of the dragon in it. When the dragon awoke from his nap, he was quite hungry. A bakery truck, coincidentally, went by, and the smell of fresh bread was more than the dragon could resist. The dragon ran down the street after the bakery truck and the house along with it, of course, like the shell of a snail. You see, the mailman was just coming up the path with some mail for the, for the billies. When the house ran just past him and he headed down the streets trying to chase after this house. You see, he tried to chase after it, but he couldn't keep up. When Billy's dad came back for lunch, the first thing he noticed was the house was gone. His house was gone. Luckily, one of the neighbors was able to tell him which way it went. Billy's dad got into his car and started looking for his house. 
on and on and on until he saw a familiar house. He saw his wife waving from an upstairs window. Billy's dad climbed over the dragon's head onto the porch roof and through the upstairs windows. And he asked, huh, how did this happen? It was a dragon, Billy said. There's no such thing as a Billy's mom interfered. But Billy interrupted, there is a dragon, a big dragon. And Billy patted the dragon on the head. The dragon wagged its tail happily. Then even faster than it had grown, the dragon started getting smaller. Soon, it was kitten size again. Hmm, I don't mind dragons this size, said mother. Why did it have to grow so big? Billy said. But I think it just wanted to be noticed. You see, in the first story that we, we read in the Old Testament reading, God tells Jonah that he needs to go to the city of Nineveh to help the people straighten up because they had veered off what God had instructed them to do. Uh, but as, uh, as brave as Jonah was, I'm not going to Nineveh, I'm not having Nineveh, and Nineveh is not having me. So he ran in the opposite direction. He took a boat and went in the opposite direction. But who is God? Mungu ni nani? God conjures up a huge, huge storm. And the boat is about to capsize when Jonah actually admits to his fellow men that he's actually at fault and he explains the whole scenario. So for it, the men decide to throw Jonah off the boat and a great fish Swallows Jonah. For three days, he is in its belly and it throws him up on dry land. By now, Jonah has learned his lesson, and I mean, who wouldn't? He goes straight to Nineveh to pursue his proper destiny. Again, it takes me back to my childhood with a question, how far are we willing to go in the pursuit of assuming something that really needs to be taken care of? How far are we willing to go to avoid taking care of something that would otherwise have been very easy to take care of initially and now has grown so big that it attracts unwarranted attention? Again, when I was a kid, very playful, very uh, adventurous. This one time to look out in Ashika Dede. And, uh, okay, see one time, in Kasa Azote, Tokyo, Kwa Daru Dede, fly Kwa Kyo, Taishika. So, E day, to me end up, na place nya to look out in Ashika Dede, kulikona nyasindefu sana. So, me ni Kishika Dede, ni kanguka, ni trip, me li tegu, I think, namuaya, ni kanguka. But in that tall grass, Kulikona, there's uh, easy cables and you should pull the steamer. The, the metallic on the trans by the side. Eh? So, up Kulikona, pull the steamer, Ilikoi me on the lever. Eo Chuma Balawa, Watoe, while you cut here and use. So, you come a feature on his own yassi. So, the men and Meshika did they? Sour Nili Shika, but Nili Trip, Nikanguka, Eo Chuma Kanidunga, Kongu. Uh, I didn't notice though until I met Tembea Tembea Nika Skia Kurarako Murarako Kwa Mgu Kwa Angalia, eh, mazee ni megoruzo nyama ni ya white Alafu sayi ndo damu inaanza kutoka Eh, nika freak out, nika ifunga Na nika chief, nika zidi home Of course, nilikuwa natakia mapema, nimefika wa kwanza Beno imeklot, nika washa washa Na hiyo story nika kanyagi, nika kanyagia Siku mbili tatu, devi atasema alianguka Akona kidonda. Kidonda, I mean. Wolf. Kidonda. Yeah. Wacha kidonda yanze kuwa septic. Yeah. Pata mahira. 
Hakuna mtu alinipeleka hospitali, nilijipeleka mimi mwenyewe. So, again, how far are you willing to assume things that should be addressed right now? Just avoiding them. Matthew, and he said to them, Is a lamp brought to be put under a basket or under a bed and not a stand? For nothing is hidden except to make manifest. Nor is anything secret except to come to light. If anyone has ears, let him hear. Pay attention to what you hear. With the measure you use, it will be measured to you, and still more will be added to you. For to one who has, more will be given. And from the one who has not, even that that he has will be taken away. Again, I take you to the story of Samson and his fall. Leading up to his fall, the guy had taken on a prostitute as his wife in the name of Delilah. It was actually a setup. And in the spirit of being conscious of things that are red flags, none of the knights, Delilah says to Samson, please tell me where your great strength lies and how you might be bound that no one could subdue you. First night, first question the woman asks Samson. Samson said to her, if they bind me with seven fresh bowstrings that have not been dried, then I shall become weak and be like any other man. First night, first question. Of course she tried that, he broke loose. And I don't know how dumb he must have been not to see this as a red flag, but he did it anyway. Second night, behold, you have mocked me and told me lies. Please tell me how you might be bound. I mean, second day. He goes on ahead and tells her, if they bind me with new ropes, <laughs> if they bind me with new ropes that have not been used, then I shall become weak and be like any other man. And so she tries it. It doesn't work, of course. Third night, same woman. And she said to him, how can you say I love you when your heart is not with me? You have mocked me these three times, and you have not told me where your great strength lies. I shall not continue with the rest. You see, if you continue assuming things that are bugging you today, now, well, they are small dragons, and the Swahilis have a saying for this, is poziba ufo taziba ukuta. Um, they grow. You somehow give them the strength to continue bugging you in ways that they shouldn't have. In fact, they stir up a bit of storms in your life to unsettle even the things that were otherwise settled. If you have a friend who drinks tea, hot tea, and sip it as if they are ululetin, how evil must you be if one, you're able to stand that, two, you don't tell them, and three, if you yourself were doing that and no one ever told you that, how played would you feel? Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For the tree is known by its fruit. You brood of vipers, how can you speak good when you are evil? For out of the abundance of your heart the mouth speaks. The good person out of his good treasures brings forth good. And the evil person out of his evil treasures bring forth evil. I tell you on the day of judgment, people will give account for every careless word and act that they do and speak. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. 
This is from Matthew 12, 33 to 37. In sum, I shall finish by saying this. Most of us are looking for salvation, are looking for redemption. Sometimes you're looking for that great sign as Christ would uh, criticize the Pharisees for having desire to look for that great sign so that they can tell for sure, for sure, this is him. So we are looking for this salvation, but, and sometimes even desperate to do that. But sometimes the reason that we don't find the salvation we look, we look for is because one, we are, lo we are not looking where we least expect to be looking, and two, we are not looking low enough. Sometimes you are looking for Christ in the next person. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you again. As we requested earlier in this session, that you be with us. It is my utmost prayer that the words spoken through me will be fleshed out in these people. But knowing and understanding, dear Heavenly Father, that things assumed as sins of tomorrow. Dambi si dambi, ila dambi, nikurudia dambi. So bring to light in our hearts and our minds, O oh Lord, the things that we so, so much desire to tackle, be it pathologies in our families, be it pathologies in our lives. The devil sometimes convince, convinces us that we can run away from these things, but little do we know that we have to tackle them head on, that they may cease becoming mountains in our lives, that we may be able to settle and move forward for the path that you have for us is a desirable one. You are the maker of all good things and nothing good that exists that didn't come from you. In this, we trust you and the Father that you're going to rest your Holy Spirit among us, that we are, we are going to become vessels and instruments of change for one another and more so in our lives. This is our humble prayer. We pray this shortly by believing and trusting in Jesus' holy name. Amen.